Right, hi everyone. Apparently I'm live. Just wait for somebody to um, acknowledge that and then I'll move into the other room because I'm in my daughter's bedroom at the moment. So let's just see what happens. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Nothing. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, one person. Oh, that's. Hi, oh hey, hi, right, okay, we're on. One, per two people. So I don't know what's gone wrong there. Right, three people, people are joining now. Right, you're just gonna have to give me a second to set up in another room, if you don't mind. Hi. Oh dear, right. Excuse me, get a guided tour of my house now, which is, wasn't the plan. Hope it's tidy. Oh, sorry, Anna. I'm live on YouTube now. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I'm, a, I'm kicking my daughter out of the little room. Oh, somebody's liked it already. That's good. At least That's it's good. entertaining. This is Anna. Hello. Right, I'll leave you to it. Right. Sorry, Anna. That's all right. Can I get... Oh, yeah, yeah, it's I fine. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Right, so I'll just put this back where it normally goes on the Wednesday lessons. Okay, right, so you can see the board, hopefully. Right, sorry, I'll take this all down. So while I'm doing this, the plan was to do this via my iPad, on with all the questions, and I could write on it with my Apple Pencil, so you could see me filling in the answers, and it has not worked, so that's, not good. So I feel like I've wasted all that money on that iPad and it's not really doing what I wanted it to. Okay. Right, it's fine now, yeah, okay, good. Right, I just need to get one more thing, I'll just get my phone so I can check the chat as I'm talking, and then um, we're, we're in business, okay? So just literally one more minute and then we'll go, we'll start. Just need to go and get that phone. Right, okay, um, so the plan was, I'll just, because we've got some people on the screen now, um, so the plan was to share my iPad screen with you so that you could see the questions and as I was going through the answers, I would just write on the screen and you would see it all appear um, on, the, on, on, the, on YouTube, okay, but that hasn't worked. So I need to look into that. Okay, right. So hopefully you've had a go at the questions. Because I'm not on the iPad, I can't. You can't see the questions. So I'm gonna to have to try and do my best to sort of give you a flavour of what the questions were about. Um, hopefully you've seen them, and then we'll go through the answers. Okay. All right then. I'm gonna to have to use this as my because uh, I haven't got a print out of them because I don't have a printer at all. Right. Okay, so question, well, there's only three questions, so I don't think this will take particularly long. Okay, so question one, compound B is shown below, and it can be used to synthesize organic compounds with different functional groups. So compound B looked like this. Okay. So that's compound B, right. So it says that it's a member of the homologous series we have to name the homologous series it belongs to and the general formula 
um, for this homologous series. Okay, so obviously it's got a carbon-carbon double bond. There's no other functional group in there. So this is an alkene. And the general formula is CNH2N. Okay, so that's deemed as quite a simple question. And so therefore you'd only get this one mark for both of those to be correct. The next part of the question says, what reagents and conditions are needed to convert co compound B into a saturated hydrocarbon? So saturated, they're testing your knowledge of saturated. This is unsaturated at the moment because it's got this double bond. So saturated means it needs a carbon-carbon single bond across there. So to do that, we would use hydrogen and you would use a nickel catalyst. Okay, and again, there's only one mark for that and both of those would be needed. Now, in the mark scheme for this question, I've, I've automatically put down 150 degrees as well. Okay, but that wasn't an essential part of the answer. Okay, but I would tell my students, if there might be some of my students in, in the room now, but I would always tell my students to put the temperature in. Okay, because you never know whether they're going to want to see it or not. So I would put that in. Okay. Right. Okay. This is where it's going to be slightly problematic because obviously we've got a lot of information on the screen here. Um, so what I'll do, we've already got compound B on there. And then what it says is there's an arrow there and it had concentrated sulfuric acid across the top there. And there's a compound um, C here. And down here, it just says polymerization. And we have to draw the structure of compound D, which would be the product of that. But we want to see the repeat unit. Uh, so, OK. Right. So the other bit of information is compound C. When that's reacted with K2Cr2O7 and H2SO4 and reflux, it says there is no reaction. Okay, so I hope this is first, this is really easy. So the, the example had been quite kind because they've drawn that in what I call an ethene structure shape. So if those CH3 groups were hydrogens, that would be ethene. So the easiest thing to do when it's in that format is just open the double bond up, put the end bonds on, and then put all the atoms or groups of atoms back on. So I always tell my students to make your monomer of your addition polymer look like an ethene molecule. So model it on ethene, and then you can draw the um, repeat unit very, very easily. Square brackets around it, and that's it. But remember that the bonds have to poke through the square brackets, okay? So that's the first one. Right, the second, this bit here, there's a bit more to this bit here. So we've got some information about this compound C here. Um, when it's reacted with concentrated sulfuric acid and heat, it turns into an alkene, okay? So you, this is where your knowledge of the reaction map that I showed you on Wednesday, hopefully some of you, well, I know some of you because I recognize your names now, um, you'll have um, seen that big map that I drew on this part of the board. So if you know that map inside out, you're gonna know that this needs to be an alcohol, okay? So when an alcohol is reacted with concentrated sulfuric acid and heat, the water's taken out. It's a dehydration reaction, or you could say an elimination reaction, okay? So compound C, we now know that this needs to be an alcohol, okay? Now the other bit of information is it doesn't react with acidified potassium dichromate under reflux. 
So there's only one alcohol or one type of alcohol that's going to do that. It's going to be a tertiary alcohol. So this C needs to be a tertiary alcohol. Okay. Right. So for a tertiary alcohol, we need that there be three carbons directly attached to the OH carbon. So when we put the water back on for the alcohol, we need the OH group to be on here. So if I just draw that like that, there's the CH3s, and there's the two original hydrogens and the new hydrogen, okay? So that's a tertiary alcohol because that carbon with the OH on has got one, two, three carbons attached. And when you try and oxidize that, nothing would happen okay so obviously the other the other possible answer which is wrong unfortunately would be that one because the water could go that way around so i'll just put everything back on okay so if you got the water the wrong the wrong way around you'd get that now that is um a primary alcohol and that would react with acidified potassium dichromate and it would give you, under reflux, it would give you a carboxylic acid. And so therefore, this was the answer. This thing here. Okay. Right. Can I just ask, I see there's 23 people on an eight length, so is this all right? Because this is not what I planned to do. Unfortunately, the technology's let me down. Um, so are we happy with this? Is it worth keeping going? Oh, okay, good, right, excellent. Thanks for that. Right, we'll crack on then. So I'll just put these out of the way because I'm not going to use them today. Right, okay. Just gonna have to bear with me as I wipe the board every time we get onto a new part of the question. Okay. Right, so we've now we're moving on to compound F, which looks like this. So H O C C O H um, H C H. Sorry, that's an H. CH3, CH3. Okay. Right, so nice straightforward question. What's the empirical formula of compound F? So empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in the compound. Okay, so the first thing I would do is count up all the carbons, hydrogens and oxygens and it comes to C4O2 H10. So that's the molecular formula. That's the actual number of atoms in the molecule. So you've got to look at the numbers. Can that be simplified? Of course it can. They're all divisible by two. So the empirical formula would be C2 O H5. That's the empirical formula for that one. Okay. They can be in any order as long as the numbers are next to the right atom. Okay. So C2OH5, C2H5O, okay, right. So a student prepares a two-step synthesis to prepare compound F from compound B, okay. So I'm gonna draw compound B back down here. So it was C double bond C, H, H, CH3, CH3, that was compound B. That's compound F. And basically, we need to react this with something for step one. We need to turn it into compound E. And then we're going to react that with something to make compound F. Okay? Um, on, the, on the paper, it's drawn the other way around, but I'm sure you can work this out. Okay, so we need to start here. Two-step synthesis, this is step two. 
step one, step two, and we need to get to F. Okay, so again, you need to know these maps, these synthesis maps off by heart. So this here, well, we need, we need groups on here that we can substitute with these OH groups. And the group in question is a halogen group, okay? So basically, we need to turn this into a dihalogenoalkane. So it's basically the same sort of uh, framework. So put all the original atoms back on. So I'm going to go for chlorine. So Cl, Cl, okay? So that would mean reacting it with chlorine, Cl2, okay? Now when I, when I set this for my students as a homework um, a couple of weeks ago, some of them, I hope they don't mind me saying this, but some of them put HCl there. Okay, so if we follow that through HCl, you would only have one chlorine on, on here. So you would, you, let's say you didn't have that one. You wouldn't then be able to substitute, um, if that was a hydrogen, you wouldn't be able to substitute that for an OH group. Okay, so you need that to be two CLs so you can create two OH groups. All right, um, that of course, that could be bromine, Br, Br, iodine, um, I, I. Fluorine's not a good, a good, a good one to use because it's so deadly, so dangerous. So fluorine, I wouldn't, I would avoid that one. Okay. So chlorine, and then how do we go from this to this? The best thing to use is sodium hydroxide. Okay. Um, technically, you could use water, but it's so slow. I would I was. The first question, I just need to check the chat. Is he an alcohol? Someone's asking. Um, no, he's a dihalogenoalkane. Makes sense now. Right, okay, that's fine. I think everyone seems reasonably happy with that. So, that was the first question. So if you think about what was that testing your knowledge of, I would say that's testing your knowledge and understanding of that uh, reaction pathways map. Essentially, you know, do you know how to go from um, A to B or A to B to C or whatever? Okay, just sort of that. Now, someone's asked, was water not in the mark scheme? I would need to check that. I don't really want to do it live now. Um, I think when I marked the homeworks for my students, I actually gave the, the, I gave the student the mark for water, um, but I advised them to use sodium hydroxide, okay? Hydrolysis of a halogenoalkane is really slow in water. It does work, but it's very, very slow. Sodium hydroxide is the preferred, um, or potassium hydroxide, as long as it's aqueous, aqueous hydroxide, okay? Right, question two. So it starts off, organic compounds can be prepared in the lab using synthetic roots with two or more stages. So it's the same sort of starting point of a question. A student devises a two-stage synthesis of cyclohexene from bromocyclohexane. Okay, so let's just quickly draw that what's on the, um, well, the exam paper. So we've got bromocyclohexane, step one, says NaOH, AQ, and then that generates E, so calls it intermediate E, and then step two, it just says cyclohexene. Okay, um, Right, so it says suggest the, the structure of the intermediate for E, so suggest the structure of this thing here, and the reagent uh, and conditions for step two. So what will that be? What will those reagents and conditions need to be to go from E to that? Okay, so again, it's a, this, this question's from a different paper, but it's still testing your knowledge of the map, like all the different arrows and where they go. Okay. Well, this is fairly straightforward, hopefully, because um, halogenoalkanes react with aqueous 
hydroxide ion so there's that reaction we saw in the previous one um, and they are going to generate the going to substitute the br group for the oh group so i'll just rub e out and put it back on so this is going to be that okay so this is intermediate e and then the next part step two how do you go from that to that well it's kind of we've already seen it in question one we need to remove this oh group and one of these hydrogens so we need to eliminate water we need to dehydrate it so we're going to use um, concentrated h2o4 and heat now you could also use here just put that up there h3po4 is okay for that okay next one um, the student carries out this synthesis and obtains 1.23 grams of pure cyclohexene so they've obtained 1.23 grams of this from 5.50 grams of bromocyclohexane so they've started with 5.50 grams of this and they've made 1.23 grams of that calculate the percentage yield of cyclohexane give your answer to an appropriate number of significant figures right so the first thing is how many how many significant figures are appropriate look at the data that's been supplied and you should always give your significant figures to the lowest number now they're both the same number of significant figures they're both three so three significant figures would be appropriate for this okay so in the mark scheme it will say must be given to three significant figures so there'll be a mark lost if you don't do that okay so next thing is we need to work out how many moles of um bromocyclohexane we've got so moles of this um mass over mr so we've got 5.50 divided by the mr which is 162.9 and that comes out at 0 0.0338 so that's how many moles of starting material we've got there's a one-to-one -one ratio running right through this so you should expect to get that many moles of this so these are your expected moles of product or theoretical moles sometimes it's known as so now we're going to work out well how many moles did we actually make we've got 1.23 grams of product how many moles is that moles of product so cyclohexane so we've got 1.23 grams mass over mr 82 is the mr of that that comes out at 0 0.0150 notice i'm giving everything the three significant figures i'm not giving the examiner any excuse to knock any marks off okay so that's the um, actual moles of product and then percentage yield is actual over expected times 100 so percentage yield will be actual not 0.15 not 15 sorry divided by 0 0.0338 times 100 and of three significant figures that comes out at 44.4 percent okay someone just said then did anyone get 44.4 percent as the answer Bjorn you are correct well done okay fantastic So that was the end of question number two. Oh no, it's not. We've got a mechanism now. Okay. Right, this is going off the off the board.
Okay, so the next part of the question was a mechanism. So it says cyclohexane is reacted with bromine to prepare, prepare organic compound F. Give the structure of compound F and outline the mechanism for this reaction. Include cur curly arrows, charges and relevant dipoles. Right, now I'm aware that some of you may not be doing OC OCRA, excuse me. Um, so I know there are a bit like there's little differences in mechanisms for um, different exam boards. I think I know what OCRA would expect. It's crazy that different exam boards ask for different things, but uh, anyway, so let's let's go for this. So the bromocyclohexane, um, sorry, cyclohexane reacting with bromine to create the product. Right, okay, so let's go through the mechanism. I'll explain it as well. So what we've got here, we've got a carbon-carbon double bond. So that's a region of high electron density because you've got a sigma bond and a pi bond in there. Okay, so you've got kind of more electrons. You've got twice as many electrons involved in this region than any of these other single bonds. These are just sigma bonds. So this is a non-polar molecule, bromine, identical electronegativities. But as it approaches the electron density of this double bond, that's going to repel the electrons. There's a pair of electrons in this bond. Normally they would be sitting in the middle because the electronegativities are the same. That's going to repel them slightly towards this bromine. I don't need to show this pair of electrons, by the way, so I'm going to take them out. So this is slightly negative compared to this end of the molecule, which is slightly positive. So that's the dipole that they're on about when they say um, include any relevant dipoles. Okay. So what's going to happen is a pair of electrons, and it's the pi electron pair if you're interested, because they're sitting on the outside of the bond. They're going to be attracted to that bromine there, which is slightly positive, opposite charges attract. So the rule, you've got to take your curly arrow from the middle of the bond, okay? So make it obviously from the middle. Don't drift towards the ends, because the examiner might think, oh, that's too close to the end. I'm not giving them the mark for that. It's got to go from the middle of the bond, okay? So there'd normally be a mark going for that. There'd be a second mark going for I'm just going to make this a bit longer just to make a pair of electrons that I drew and then rubbed out. That's going to be, they're going to be repelled by this electron pair because like charges repel each other completely on that bromine molecule there, on that bromine atom, sorry. And what that will do is it will break this bond, okay? Now you don't need to show the breaking of the bond. On the, um, on the mechanism, but that's what's actually going to happen. So that bond's going to break. So if I just put a little star there, just put some extra detail on it. It's not needed for the marks for this question, but it's worth knowing anyway. This is heterolytic fission. And that's because from the um, pair of electrons in the broken bond, this bromine atom gets both of them this bromine atom gets none of this pair of electrons. Okay, so what's that going to generate? It's going to generate the carbocation. So I'm going to put the bromine, I'm going to either put it there or there, because that's where my double bond was. Let's just stick it on the top. Now, this is where exam boards are a bit different. I'm going to put the plus there, okay? Because um, I know AQA are a bit funny about the next curly arrow. So we'll put that plus there. OCR, you can actually put it there, which is crazy, but there you go. So this is your carbocation. This bromine here has effectively gained an electron. So it already owned, let's say, that electron from the bond, but it's now gained that one, which belonged to this bromine. And so therefore, it's gained an electron. So I'm gonna show the pair of electrons from the bond that's them there, and the minus sign, okay? And then the final thing in the mechanism is that pair of electrons is gonna be attracted to that positively charged carbon, like that, and it's gonna create a covalent bond between that carbon and that bromine atom. And so we're gonna get the product, which is Br. 
for you. So that will that will get you all the marks for that. Um, sometimes they want to know the name of the mechanism. We may as well do it while it's on the screen. So this is electrophilic addition. Notice there's only one L there. It's a really common mistake. I see double L towards the end of electrophilic addition. Okay. And why is it electrophilic? The, the definition of an electrophile is an electron pair acceptor. So you can see this bromine has accepted a pair of electrons from the pi bond. And that's why it's electrophilic. Okay, so I've gone way more than the four marks that were up for grabs. Okay, so the marks were scored for that curly arrow there. I'll put them on now. Uh, the dipole and that curly arrow. The correct carbocation intermediate. And then the curly arrow drawn from the pair of electrons to the positively charged carbon. And the correct structure of the final product. So there was your four marks there. Right, I'll just quickly check the chat. Uh, someone's asking, is heterolytic bond fission represented by a half-headed arrow? No, that's homolytic fission, because only one electron goes um, in homolytic fission. Uh, also, I teach OCRA. They don't. They don't. Um, we don't really bother with the different types of arrows. In fact, we don't at all. Um, not sure what other exam boards do. Okay. Right. Final question. Right, one bromobutane is an organic liquid with boiling point 102. Right, one bromobutane, one, two, three, four. So boiling point 102 degrees C. The student prepares one bromobutane by reacting butane one oil with sulfuric acid and sodium bromide. The student boils the mixture for one hour. Um, so let's just, here the reaction equations given so CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2Br. The equation's been written like this. So I'm just doing exactly what it says in the uh, example paper. CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2OH. Uh, no, Br, sorry. What am I doing? Oh dear. Right, that's the Br, that's the OH. Oh my word, this is terrible. <laughs> Done it again. That's bells. You can't edit these either. What a nightmare. Right. Sorry about that. Still got 20 people on, so right, okay. An H tool. Right, what other information is given? Right, so we've got the boiling point of the product. We've got the equation. We've also got information that says the student obtains a reaction mixture containing an organic layer density 1.27 grams per cubic centimeter. So this is the organic compound, obviously. 1.27 grams per cubic centimeter. That's the density. That's obviously going to come into some part of the answer. Um, and it says in an aqueous layer, 1.0 grams per cubic centimetre. Okay, so. Okay. Right, draw a label diagram to show how you would set up the apparatus um, for the preparation outline a method to obtain a pure sample of one bromobutane from the reaction mixture. Okay, so preparation first of all. 
So the key word in the information from the question is, it says the student boils the mixture for an hour, okay? So if they're gonna boil it for an hour, you're not gonna want it to boil dry, okay? So if you use distillation, it's gonna, everything's just gonna leave the flask, so it needs to be reflux, okay? So as well as testing your understanding, your, your ability to draw a reflux diagram, they're also expecting you to work out that they want you to draw reflux. That's my interpretation of that question. Okay, so the preparation stage is reflux. So somebody asked on Wednesday, do you have to draw these things? And I was putting these on the screen. Yep, you do. And here's an example of a question that gets you to do that. Right, so reflux is fairly simple. So let's have um, some form of, let's put the condenser in first. Notice how I'm drawing it. Okay, so that's that. And then at the bottom of this, I'm just going to connect it to a flask. I'm just going to go round bottom flask. It's a bit easy to draw. Okay, so let's just label this up. Um, we need a heat source. So you could just draw something like that. You don't need to draw a Bunsen burner or a water bath or anything like that. Just draw that. Uh, we need to say what this is. This is a condenser. Make sure that must be kept open. So if you put a plug over the top of that, a bung or anything, you're going to lose a mark. That needs to be kept open. And the other thing they'd want to see is the flow of the water through the condenser. So remember what we said on Wednesday, it goes in at the bottom. So water in at the bottom and out at the top. And that's to ensure that the condenser fills up properly. So you fill it up under gravity and you get efficient cooling of the vapor. Okay, we may as well just put uh, reaction mixture. Although they wouldn't, they wouldn't expect you to do that. And remember, that's got to be kept open. Okay. And also, just make sure that that's completely sealed there. You don't want any gaps there. Okay. So that's that one. And then the next part of the question says, um, outline a method to obtain a pure sample of one bromobutane from the reaction mixture. So, this is going um, boiling away for an hour in there. So that's essentially a mixture of your product and aqueous substances. So you can see in the equation you've got water there, okay? So we need to just end up with that, okay? So, the separation um, steps require the use of a separating funnel. Okay, so remember that uh, looked, where have I got it? So I'll put this on, that might actually you, might come in handy that. So we've got a separating funnel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour the reaction mixture, pour this, into there so that would be the first thing um pour can i just put rxn for reaction reaction mixture into a separating funnel so you can imagine that you're going to end up with two layers in that separating funnel you're going to have your um organic layer and your aqueous layer. So the next thing I would say is allow layers to settle. Okay. Next thing, we've got to establish which layer is which. So we've got the density information. So this organic substance is more dense than water. So that's going to be the bottom layer and the aqueous layer is going to sit on top, okay? 
So we're going to say um, collect the lower organic layer. And I would just just double check. You're telling the examiner you know why it's the lower layer. It wasn't a guess. It's because you know you've tied it in with that density information. So collect the lower organic layer and then just maybe just put in brackets, highest density. Okay. So you've then got like a conical flask or something with this organic layer in. There'll be small traces of water in there because if you can't exactly catch the um, interface between the aqueous layer and the um, organic layer. So remove small traces of water by adding a drying agent and then give an example so I'm going to go for the one I remember CaCl2 so you're then going to have so if you imagine you'll have let's draw it here You'll have a conical flask, you'll have your organic layer in, and you'll have lumps of drying agent which have absorbed the tiny amounts of water. So you need a filter to that. And there's one bit of information we haven't used yet, and it's this boiling point of 102 degrees C. So what they would expect you to say last is redistill. and collect, um, distillate at 102 degrees C. And that is what they would look for, for something like that question. Now, I don't know what, if OCR, sorry, I don't know if AQA do this now, but OCR have started marking questions like this by levels rather than by you get a mark for this and a mark for that and basically it's a bit of a nightmare for teachers to mark to sort of decide where is it a level one answer is it a level two answer is it a level three answer um, that's obviously going to be a full mark full mark answer because everything's in there um, if you start missing little bits of information out but it's generally okay you'll be classed as a level two answer so you'll kind of typically get sort of three to four marks this is worth six marks. If you're missing too much out, you'll go down to level one and you'll only get something like one or two marks. And then if you if you can't say anything, you won't get any marks, obviously. Okay. So I prefer marking questions where it's you know it's obvious you get a mark for that, tick, tick, whereas it's a bit harder with that. Okay. Right. Maybe finished. So just going to do um, the percentage yield calculation. So I'm going to have to rub, clear some space. Get rid of that. I'll go to a different coloured pen. So it. Okay, final bit. What time is it? Oh, 3.55, so about five minutes. Right, a student uses 0.15 moles of butane 1 all. So they've used 0 0.150 moles of that. And the student obtains a 61.4% yield. Of, okay, so it's a 61.4% yield. And we've got to calculate the mass of product obtained. Okay, so mass obtained. That's what we're being asked to calculate. Okay, so the first thing I would say is, so if it was 100% yield, we would expect to get the same number of moles of product if it was 100%. However, 
it's only that percent yield. And so therefore we need to work out how many moles of product we're gonna make factor in the yield. So first thing is moles of product is 61.4% uh, of um, 0.15. So that came out at 0.0921. Okay, so that got you a mark. And then all we've got to do now, we know, we know how many moles of that we've made from the yield. How many grams is that? Mass of product. Um, moles times MR, so 0.0921 multiplied by the MR, which is 136.9, and that comes out at 12.6 grams. Oh, and it did say, um, give your answer to three significant figures. So obviously that's what I've done there. Right, well, that was not how I'd planned it. Uh, sorry about all the getting that wrong three times. That was uh, slightly embarrassing, or very embarrassing actually. Right, so how many questions have we got? Oh, great. Oh, well, there's two people have enjoyed that. That's really good to see. Okay, so... You're welcome, Hanbop, welcome. Um, yeah, okay. So what I'm thinking of doing, just before you all disappear, what I'm thinking of doing um, next week, so we'll go, we'll still do the Wednesday. So it's quite, it's worked out quite well actually. So Wednesday's the lesson. So Wednesday at seven, I'm gonna go through spectroscopy. So I'm gonna go through mass spec, and infrared okay and then on Friday if you want and I'll just wait and see what sort of things pop up in the chat on Friday I can set some questions um, and go through them on the, on the board like that ideally on my iPad because then you've got the exam paper you can physically see it on your screen and I'm just writing it yep somebody likes the sound of that that's great okay so we can start doing that and then after um after next week i imagine we'll still i mean i know the prime minister is going to be saying something on sunday at seven o'clock but i can't imagine things i don't i really don't think things are going to go back to normal for a while so what we could do <laughs> carbon and proton nmr clutter free are you a year 13 student by any chance to say something maybe they're not oh OCRB student right have you not have you not watched my um, videos I've done loads of videos on NMR absolutely loads um, so I'd like to think you all know that I've made like 600 odd videos on A-level chemistry I've covered the entire specification um, if you go to my Twitter Twitter page, my pinned tweet is my. Um, that's, I keep, sorry, I'm being distracted. Can we do spectroscopy? Yeah, well, that's what we're going to do next week. Spectroscopy. So I'm going to teach NMR, not NMR. I'm going to teach mass spec and infrared, and then I'm going to do three exam questions on that topic on Friday. Okay. How similar are edX and OCR boards? <laughs> Have you? I'll take a look, thanks. Yeah, group two and group seven. After next week, we will. it's, it's a free-for-all. So basically, the more people that get in touch with me and say, can we do this particular topic? That's the topic we'll do, okay? So I need a significant number of people to request a topic I can't just go on the first person, okay? Um, you're welcome, Leah, Rebecca. All right.
it's four it's four oh one so i'm gonna i'm gonna stop now okay so we'll see you on wednesday i'll um put the i'll put the information out over the weekend i'll attach the notes and the completed notes but i'll go i'll do everything on the board it seems to work without any problems um and i'll just try i'll keep experimenting okay bye bye everybody i'll keep experimenting with the ipad and hopefully get that sorted Okay, cheers, enjoy the rest of your day and Wednesday. See you then, bye.